Now we're going to find the areas between curves using subregions. Now in this illustration, you will see that we, are have, we have two functions. We have f of x and g of x. But our f of x and g of x, we're able to generate two areas with two subregions right here. And today we're going to learn how to find or how to find the area of the two regions that you are seeing right now using definite integration. So the basic premise here is finding first the area of your first region, added it to the area of your second region to find the area between the closed interval A and B. So in finding the areas between curves, we know that all we need to do is to find or use the function, the top function minus the bottom function and evaluate it from our upper and lower limits based on our point of intersection. And we will use that later today. For this example, we need to find the area of the region in the first quadrant and that is bounded above by y equals squared of x and below which is x axis and the line y is equal to x minus 2. So now we are working on functions with given lines and curves. So to illustrate our functions or given function, if we sketch the graph of y equals square root of x, it's going to be this curve right here. And the curve or the line y equals x minus 2 is just a line which is represented by this line in this particular illustration. And below is the x-axis and we need to make sure that the x-axis is also illustrated because it is stated in the problem that we're going to find the area between these three functions. Now, the basic step here is to first sketch the graph so you would understand or you will be able to visualize the area that you're going to be working on and the second step is to find the area of your first subregion and you will notice that we have two subregions in our function right here now how can you tell if a function has subregions or not it's pretty simple if you move for example this is your area and if you move your finger or your pencil from left going to the right, you will notice that the top function is y equals square root of x and the bottom function is the x-axis. And it's consistently top and bottom axis up until this point because from this point, the top function will still be y equals square root of x. However, the bottom function is now changed from the x-axis, now we are touching y equals x minus 2. So therefore, when we're performing um, definite integration, our bottom function is changing. So therefore, we, we need to create two subregions to be able to cover one part and the second part. And that is why we're able to find two areas that we will find using the definite integral process that we did before. So our first area would be this area right here. So this is what I considered my first region and this is my second region. So find the area of the first region. So it's going to be the definite integral between the interval 2 to this point of intersection of top minus bottom dx plus the area of this region which is the integration from 0 to 2 from yung, the top function which is square root of x minus the bottom function which is your x-axis. And I'm going to show you the work or illustration on how to use the definite integration in finding the area of these two subregions. So this is my first step, sketching the graph. My second step, finding the area of my first region. And the second step is finding the area of my second region. So let's have the illustration. So once again, I'm going to show you the graph of our functions. So this is the illustration of y equals square root of x. However, we are just concerned about the graph below or just on the y axis or x axis and this is going to be our line y equals x minus 2. I'm going to get rid of my bottom part of my y equals square root of x and I will just concentrate on my first quadrant or the region or the area bounded inside the first quadrant. Now 
I know that I'm going to have two subregions right here because my top and my bottom function is changing on the interval x equal to 2. So the first step that I'm going to do is to find the point of intersection of my subregions. So my first subregion, I'm going to consider my orange area. And to be able to find my other limit, I know that the lower limit for that subregion is x equal to 2. I just need to find the upper limit of that subregion by finding its point of intersection, which is equating square root of x equal to x minus 2 and solving for the value of x. So now that we have x equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4 by expanding x minus 2 squared, I can set it to 0 so I can have my point of intersection. So I have x squared minus 5x plus 4, which is factorable. So I have two values of x. We have x minus 1 times x minus 4, which will give us x equal to positive 1 and x equal to positive 4. Now that I have two values of x, I know that I'm just going to use x is equal to 4 because that is the approximated area of my limit based on the graph. So now that I have my interval, I am ready to solve for my area under the first subregion. Now that point of intersection will give me 4 and 2 and that will help me identify my curve later on. And to find the point of intersection of my other subregion, all I need to do is to, quit, to equate my top function by the bottom function so I'll have y equals x minus 2 and I'll have 0 is equal to x minus 2 because that's the value of my y along the y along the x axis so I'll have x is equal to 2 so that is the value of my x so that is going to be 2 0 for the point of intersection of my um, other subregion now to find the area of my subregion on the right, I'll have the integral of the top, which is square root of x, minus the bottom, which is 0, dx, from 0 to 2. And to find the integral of square root of x, dx, from 0 to 2, we're just going to evaluate it and find its area. And after that, I'm going to find the area on my second subregion, which is going to be the integral of the top function which is square root of x minus the bottom function which is x minus 2 dx from 2 to 4. So this time my upper limit and my lower limit is changed because I'm using a different subregion. And finding the area of those two subregions and adding them up together, I'll have a is equal to 1.447 plus 1.886 by evaluating my definite integral. So therefore the area for my function will give me 3.333 or 10 over 3 units squared by this particular technique. And that's how we find the area of two subregions or subregions in calculus. Now the second technique that I'm going to show in finding the area of two curves is finding the area with respect to x and finding the area with respect to y. Now in our previous technique, we're able to find the area of this particular functions by cutting or splitting the area into two subregions. This subregion right here plus the other subregion and we'll be able to find the area between interval x equal to 0 up until x is equal to 4. We have two subregions and we are able to find the definite integral or the area under the curve with respect to x-axis because the values or the limits that we are using is along the x-axis. Now, if you will notice, we can change the orientation of this graph and we'll be able to change its lower and upper limit by flipping our curve right here. Now when we once we flip our curve you will notice that our top and bottom function will be consistently the same from left to right. So if we able to change the orientation or transform our graph using this rotation, now we can see that we can integrate our area under the curve 
using this function right here and this function here consistently. So we can do that in integration. And that is the second technique that I'm going to show you. How to change your uh, integral function with respect to x, making it with respect to y. Because what we're working on is a consistent top and bottom function so that we don't need to resort in cutting or splitting our area into two subregions. Now, to give you an illustration of that particular rotation, this will be the area of the curve that we are going to use and we're going to find by rotating our function in this manner. So now we only have one area to consider with respect to y-axis. So now we're going to change the orientation of our function from x to y. And I'm going to show you how to convert the uh, function with respect to x going to with respect to y-axis. So this is our original function with, re with respect to x. And when we find the integration or the area under the curve with respect to x, we, have, we are using two subregions to be able to find the total area under the curve. Now, if we tilt our graph, you will notice that if we um, run our pencil from left to right, the top and the bottom function will consistently be the same using the purple curve and the red line. And by doing so, we'll be able to just use one area under the curve to find the solution of our problem. So to do that, we need to first change the orientation and integrate our function in terms of y. So our original function, we have y is equal to square root of x. So if we're changing our orientation, we need to change it in terms of y. So that means it needs to be x equals the value of y function. So now we have x equal to y squared. And this time, it's now in terms of y. And since that's our first function, the top function, the bottom function, which is a line, we have y is equal to x minus 2. And changing its orientation with respect to y, we'll have x is equal to y plus 2. So now, we are using a different set of function, but this time we're going to use it with respect to y. And we're doing that so that we'll have to show a different technique on how to find the area under the curve. Now, we're, I'm going to tilt it back again later on, but I want you to take a look at the uh, interval or our lower limit and upper limit that we will use in finding the area under the curve. So now we're going to be focusing on the y-axis. So for the previous example, the interval is from 2 to 4 for our first subregion. Now we're going to switch our, our limit of integration from for y. So now we're using 0 and 2 this time because we are now changing or we are now looking at it on a different orientation. So when we're working with our area under the curve, since we've changed our orientation, we're going to use the right to left method. And the right to left method is basically giving us, we're going to use the function from the right minus the function from the left. And the rightmost function is the linear equation with the red line, and that gives us y plus 2. So it's going to be an integral of y minus 2 minus the left side of our function, which is y squared, from the closed interval 0 to 2, because it's with respect to y. And by doing so, but after we set up our function or integration function, we are now ready to find the area under the curve. So let's simplify our integral function, y minus 2 minus y squ squared dy from 0 to 2. We'll change it to integral of y minus 2 minus y squared dy from 0 through 2, and by definite integration, we'll be able to find the area under the curve using this technique. And by substituting the upper limit and the lower limit, we'll have an area which is supposed to be the same as our solution on our previous example, which is 10 over 3. So the answer is still the same, but this time we are just using a single area, or a single area under or between two curves.